So Operation Anaconda was six months after 9-11. Uh, my team's mission that day was uh, to put in an overwatch position uh, supporting conventional forces in the valley below. Uh, through a, a series of changes to our, to our mission, we, we landed on top of the mountain, and, uh, and as soon as we landed, our hel helicopter came under rocket uh, RPG, rocket propelled grenade fire, and heavy machine gun fire. One of my teammates during that, uh, when all that commotion was going on, uh, fell from the helicopter, and that was, that was Neil Roberts. Uh, our helicopter was airborne when he fell out, and we, the helicopter, through a great effort of the air crew, uh, we crash landed in the in enemy territory in the valley below. After we secured that helicopter, uh, made it safe, uh, I made the decision that we were going to make a uh, immediate rescue attempt to go back and get Neil. And it was then that I led the team back up on top of that mountain, uh, made several attempts, uh, several uh, assaults on enemy fighting positions using hand grenades uh, and uh, other uh, bombs from aircraft uh, very close to my position uh, to, to effect that rescue. So the battle, battle in all in total was about 23 hours. The actual combat piece of that was probably about 14. You know, when we crash landed in the valley and uh, had to call another helicopter to come pick us up. And my, my mission at that point, you know, when we originally had my first mission was observation post. Um, second mission then becomes rescuing my teammate. Third mission was now the rescue of that air crew. So that's what I did first. I rescued that air crew, got them to a safe location. To do that, I had to get another helicopter. From that safe location, then I could turn my attention towards Neil. And I had some information that Neil, Neil was still, he was alive. So um, thinking through this, um, even, you know, for those people that are in command, that you have to, you have a, you have a, a burden, you have a responsibility towards your people. And um, I knew I knew Neil was knew Neil was in trouble. I knew he he was in the midst of the enemy, a numerically superior force, numerically superior to me. Uh, they they had me outgunned. They were uh, at extreme altitudes. We were in extreme uh, temperatures, and uh, pretty much operating at the at, at the extreme end of, of all all our aircraft capabilities. So uh, a lot of things were not going in our favor. But I didn't think that I could wait uh, until that time when things were in our favor. I didn't think my teammate had had that time. Uh, so as you can imagine, quite a very difficult decision to make. I knew at the time going back up there was going to be a one-way trip for me. So um, I'm, I'm sitting, sitting in this helicopter, my second helicopter of the evening, thinking through the, the process, the decision to go back. And uh, as you can imagine, a lot of things going through my mind. And this, this one thought kept coming back to me. And this, this thought in my head was the opening lines of the Boy Scout Oath. On my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty. On my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty. On my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty. Finally, I started listening to it, that I have not done my best yet to go get my teammate. So uh, I made the decision that I'm going to go get my teammate. And uh, I briefed my team. I looked at all of them. I said, eyes on me, eyes on me. They all looked at me. I gave them the situation, gave them the orders, and we uh, told them we're going. <clears throat> it was at that time that the pilot of the first aircraft that got shot uh, volunteered to fly us. His name was Al to fly us back. It's the very, very thing I needed. Uh, so grateful that he did a great amount of courage to take this, this guy. I mean, he just got shot down. You know, now he's going to fly right back into exactly what he knows what he's getting into. Uh, and he did. Flew, it, flew us right back. So as soon as we lifted off, um, I remember things getting, getting very quiet, at least, at least in my mind anyway. Uh, we're lifted off. I'm, I'm on the back of the helicopter, and I can remember 
got my night vision goggles on and everything's green looking through my goggles and looking back out the ramp watching the the countryside of Afghanistan going by and um, this is when um, you know the leader leader has time to be alone with his thoughts you get a few few moments and uh, this is when my thoughts were drifting back to home and going you know they drift back to my son and uh, basically um, basically I'm telling him goodbye So, <clears throat> yeah, I love you, sorry for what's to come, and um, that's the last I thought of it. I compartmentalized it, put it away in the back of my head, uh, put my mind back on task, and uh, I'm looking out that ramp, I grab, we're sitting right next to me, the, the ramp has these pistons that are coming up and down, and I reach over, I grab that piston of that aircraft, I stick my head, but half outside the aircraft to look at my mountain coming up that I'm getting ready to go fight on. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, what a majestic mountain this thing looks like. Uh, and uh, what, a, what a crazy thought about what we were about ready to get to go do looking at this thing. But that's that's what I thought about it. And, uh, and then we landed. We, took, we were taking heavy fire coming in and we landed. Upon landing, I remember that same helo pilot telling me over my headset, I had a headset on, and he tells me, team leader, good luck. That was the last thing I remember hearing from him. I took the, took the headset off, and the ramp was down, I ran off the ramp. As soon as I got off the ramp, the snow was much deeper on top than I thought. So my first step off the ramp, first one off, first step, I took a tumble, much like it. You know, if you've ever been in snow, and you step off your steps, right? And you think that next step is there, and it's not, and you take a fall. That's exactly, I took a header right off the end of the plane. And I uh, got up off that, off of that, wiped the snow from my face, and uh, joined my guys. And uh, walked up next to, to one of my teen, teammates, John, and uh, I asked John, he said, John, what do you have? Uh, he said, I, you know, I, I don't know. And then right away, we started taking heavy heavy fire from a, a bunker that was right in front of us. Uh, dug in position underneath a tree at the tarp, a heavy sustained machine gun fire coming out of there. Uh, that that gunfire came came right at us. It hit John, the bullets went through through my clothes, through my pants, went through my gear, and I dived behind a nearby rock. And I noticed John, John was down. So I took a look around at all my teammates. We, we were taking heavy fire from three sides, certain in front of us to my immediate left, further further left and right behind us, so about 270 degrees. And as I look around, there's all these, all these muzzle flashes from everywhere, and I'm thinking there's a lot of people up here. Um, I look at my guys, because I have to keep track of all of them, and they are, all of them, they're engaged in their own little battles with, with different positions. But certainly the the one that's the heaviest fires coming from the, the bunker. That's right. That's right in front of me. And I realized that hey, we got to, you know, we're all out in the open, and uh, there's there's bullets snapping by our heads, like little snapping, and uh, you can see puffs of snow coming up all around us, and the bullets it's it's, it's pretty heavy. We're out in the open. I know I got to silence this gun, for this bunker. So pull a grenade out of my pocket and uh, run run up to it as quick, quickly as I can, throw a grenade in there, and then dives back behind the rock. Grenade goes off, shooting stops, and then starts right up again. So uh, this time I'm going to do it again with another grenade, uh, but make sure I'm a little bit more accurate. So uh, I get up, get up to the bunker that, that's shooting at me, and I throw the second grenade in. I can literally see it in the air, hit, there's a, there's a tent underneath the tree that's there. The snow's on it. See the grenade hit. There's some snow puff up. I see it roll down, right into where the muzzle flash is coming from. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. It goes off, but the the gun only stops for a second and starts shooting. So again, so um, this point I'm uh, I'm out of grenades. So I'm gonna I use my rifle. I, I take rifle shots at the muzzle flash there. I just put my laser on it and pull the trigger and, and shoot in that way. And I use my uh, 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 40 millimeter grenade launcher that I have, 
and um, I use that to suppress the, the fire, the enemy fire that's coming at us from, from the left and behind us because I'm too close to the other bunker for it, for it to work. So I, I use all those grenades that slow some of the enemy fire down a little bit and I throw that gun away. Now I'm gonna, I need to readdress the, the bunker where we're taking all the heavy fire from. So to do this, I'm gonna do something a little different. I take my, my, my M60 gunner, it's right, right to my left. I take him and I put him up on top of a, on top of that rock, and I tell him to fire point blank down into that bunker, uh, and shoot left, right, inflating fire into it. I'm going to come around behind him from his left, and he's going to he's going to shoot right in front of me. He hasn't come into the bunker, and uh, that that's the plan. He starts shooting right away. Big flame coming out of his gun. I can feel some of the heat coming off his muzzle flash almost and then this brass coming out of the guns coming out so fast it's really hitting me in the face and I was like I gotta I gotta get away from, from that and I roll off the rock and just as I start getting into position uh, an enemy grenade comes out of that bunker blows up and knocks my machine gunner down and he's wounded now so this is this is a time I, I look around at all my guys again and I see there's still heavy amounts of fire coming in I look over at John John uh, I'm seeing no, no movement from John. He's in the exact same spot uh, under, under the tree where, where I last saw him. Uh, and I realized that uh, because we're out in the open, life expectancy now is going to be measured probably in seconds. So I got to do something a little different to secure this top, top of the mountain. So uh, yeah, I, I make the command to. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, so I realized that I got to do something to. To, to something different up here. So uh, I make the command that we're going to reposition my force uh, just, just to another, another uh, just over the, the side of the cliff. I'm going to um, uh, consolidate my team, like bring, bring them all together, uh, and then we're going to use close air support uh, uh, to, you know, from jets and, and other aircraft to suppress the enemy fire, and then I'm going to reoccupy the top of the mountain. To get over there, we've got to crawl because the enemy fire is pretty heavy. So to doing that, I go and I crawl over the top of John, uh, looking for some sign of life from him, and I didn't, didn't get anything from John. So um, we continue to, to relocate to, to another location. I get all my guys together, and as we're, as we're getting the guys together, I take another seriously wounded guy. He gets hit in the leg, uh, ironically, from that very same machine gun that, where I was just fighting, uh, or that very same bunker. So now I, I got another wounded guy. So I get all our guys together in the trees, uh, and it's really no more than probably than 30 feet away from uh, our, where our first engagement was. It's just now I have a little bit of terrain between me and, and, and the enemy guns. Uh, and I start calling in the, the close, close air support, uh, which is in the form of uh, an AC-130 gunship, and then eventually it was 500-pound uh, bombs. Calling those in uh, very, very close to our position. By that time, um, a lot of the sun, the sun is starting to come up, and um, we're starting to have uh, incoming enemy mortar rounds are landing very close to us. And they know they're enemy mortar rounds because the the gunship reports that there there's an enemy mortar firing on us. So uh, we're in the trees. So I have to move my guys to some rocks a little bit further down the hill just to give them a little bit of cover from that fire. So. From that position, I um, reach out and the QRF, the Quick Reaction Force, shows up and i um, very surprised that they, they come around, the helicopter comes around the side of the mountain. I remember them very suddenly flying right over the top of our position and I can look at the bottom of the plane, the helicopter, and I can see, I can still see all the rivets on the, on the bottom of that plane. And uh, it dawns on me that they're going to land right on top. And so I trying to make radio contact with them and as soon as that I do that they, they themselves come under heavy fire from on top of the mountain. So so now I have there's contact, heavy contact again up up on top of that mountain. So I make I'm able to contact the second helicopter from the quick reaction force and direct them to land at a safe location. From that location they unloaded the the, the second half of that Ranger platoon and they proceeded up to the top of the mountain and then secured the top of the mountain. So with the, that mountain secured, I can 
put my attention to, towards my guys and moving them to a, uh, to a location where I get my wounded evacuated. And, uh, and that's what we did for, for the rest of the day and then uh, defended our position throughout the remainder of the day. And that evening we were, uh, we were extracted uh, back to uh, our base.